All right, so I finally have it all put together now, and I have a little test set up here which we'll uh, go over really quickly. Um, the basic components are power supply, which you can barely see, so let me reframe this. There we go, okay, so power supply to our LISN box. Um, the DUT goes out here to the input on a small switcher that I built, prototype switcher. Um, not going to have a very high current load, but uh, we should be able to get some nice, nice noise coming barfing back out through here because this is probably really badly designed, as I've said before in a previous video. Um, the output of this is going into a load, so I can actually load this down and have, actually have the switcher do some real hard work. Um, and that's that. So the only other piece that's missing is a uh, connection up to my stand-in spectrum analyzer, which is um, not a spectrum analyzer at all, it's going to be my scope. We're going to set up the math with the FFT, and we will hope So now, okay, let's see what do we got here. Centers at 175 gigahertz. That uh, megahertz probably don't want to do that. So we'll go here. We'll whack the time based way down. We'll center on about 1.7. Ah, uh, let's get a center. Center on 400 and something kilohertz. Math. Uh, there we go. That should be nice. So our reference level should be at 20 dB. And we're doing 20 dB per division. Let's bring this up here. And, yeah, all right, good enough. Give this a try. Okay. So, right now our center is at 175 kilohertz. It's 25 kilohertz per division. So we should see some decent noise coming out of this. Um, we do need, of course, a cable of some sort. I'm gonna use, actually, a decent quality cable. Well, actually, might be like that I have. So, I'm going to feed this right in and we have it set up. X50 ohm termination. Okay. Uh, See how this goes. Okay, so let's go and try this out. See what happens. Nothing obvious. Let's put some load on the sucker. Ah, that's interesting. Move that trace out. There we go. You see this? So if this is 175 kilohertz, each one's 25, that would be 200, 250, 300 kilohertz. And if I turn the load off, Boom, that disappears. So clearly now we're seeing something coming through here. That's really cool. <clears throat> now just to make sure, what I'm going to do is, so now of course the question is, is it my load or is it, let's go down here, is it my load or is it my switcher that's causing that? Hmm. So what we'll do is we'll verify this by disconnecting the switcher from the load, disconnecting the switcher completely, and connecting the load directly up. It should have, which we should be able to test and see, and we shouldn't see anything leak through that. Or, well, I don't think we should, maybe we will. In which case we can tell right away that it's the load is the um, uh, 
the, D, the DC electronic load, in which case then we'll have to maybe try and use a uh, resistor of some sort. So let's go do the exact same thing, turn it on. I don't see anything, but I see five volts. I'm gonna turn on my load. Ah. Interesting, so we see nothing here. So that means clearly that was the switcher that was um, injecting that noise. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna rehook this back up to the switcher. And I'm gonna turn the power back on again. And there we go. No problem. Now, of course, I can't take a proper measurement with this because I don't know if it's fully calibrated and all sort of other junk. And it's it may be it may be good, but the other problem is I'm not entirely sure how to use this the FFT or in terms of actually reading a measurement off of here. But that's okay because this the whole purpose of this was to test um, that this setup I should say that this device is working. It does clearly seem to pick off the AC component on. A, uh, well, an AC component that's going through it, clearly it doesn't see, or we're not seeing anything when there's nothing, you know, when the switcher in this case, which is the, the source of our noise, is not in the system, in the test setup, we're not seeing anything with or without the load turned on, you know, whatever. So, um, it only, it only, we only see that noise appear when we have the switcher in the test setup with the load on. Uh, so under load, so that's fantastic. Um, we'll try one more test, just because I'm a paranoid bastard, and we'll do a quick check here. So we want um, say 11 volts or 12 volts, and uh, we said 200 milliamps is the load you want. So uh, V equals IR, of course. Whip, whip out your calculator. So if we know uh, V and I, we do 12 divided by 0.02, we should get 60 ohm. Alright, so we disconnected our electronic load. We're not going to need that. And what I've put in place is a 62 ohm resistor. Nice. Just what we needed. Uh, I have no idea what the power rating of this resistor is. It's big, but not big, big, big. So I'm going to leave this on only for a few moments. Um, keeping an eye on the uh, current and all that sort of stuff. So we're going to go, I'm going to set this up so you can take a look at the uh, FFT. Whoops, wrong way. All right, there we go. All right. And I'm going to apply power now. Oh yeah, there we go. You see, right there, clearly. Turn the power off. Boom. Uh, resistor didn't get too hot. Okay, so clearly you can see that we are generating that noise again, and uh, that's at a load of about 360 milliamps at 12 volts. So, that's um, uh, right. Uh, uh, well, no, uh, the input power is uh, uh, the input power is five volts, uh, th 360. 360 milliamps at five volts, and then the DC DC is boosting it up. And we're getting uh, approximately 200 milliamps through that test resistor. But you saw clearly on there that we uh, are generating a noise and we're picking it up. Fantastic. I can't wait to try this out tomorrow. Take care and uh, thanks for watching.